Barakate Hawa, Barakate Hawa Shai, Barakate Hawa, Barakate Hawa Shai, Kalhalamla, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahaw Shai, Bahashem, Braka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Mount Stone. Salutations to the Akim out there pushing this word sincerely and honestly. All right, trying to do this work at the Heavenly Father. You know, peace and blessings are upon the elect of the nation of Israel. Right, whom the Lord has foreordained before the foundation of the earth to receive the spirit of truth in these last days and to receive the gift of repentance and grace, you know, an exemption from the judgment that's about to come on the earth. The title of this lesson is A Vision of Slaughter. Right, and we're gonna reveal why the um the lesson is called A Vision of Slaughter um in when we when we get to um the final sets of precepts. Right now, it is an exhortation, a warning, you know, to the to the um the the unrepentant, you know, people of Israel, men and women, that are still unrepentant, and also an exhortation to those who have repented, and those who are, you know, learning this truth, and are trying to do the things that are pleasing to Yahweh Bashem Shai and who are praying and beseeching him, you know, to um to have us in his good graces when he sets out to to reap his judgment. Right? So I'm gonna first off start off with some warning scripts as you Because our people our people really don't know the terror that the Heavenly Father is about to bring on this earth, yo. Terror that have never been seen on the earth. Our people take it lightly, right? They take everything for a joke. They make memes about everything, you know? And they continually add sin to sin without fear of the repercussions from the Heavenly Father, right? But one of our main duties as a prophet is to warn the people about the things that they are doing that they ought not to do. We're going to start at Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. Let's see if we can take a look at that word, warning. It wasn't a, um, a planned part of the lesson, but let's see if we can do it. All right. So this is warning. Um, Zahar. Zahar. And it says to admonish. What does the word admonish mean? The word admonish means to reprimand, to rebuke, to scold, to reprove. Right? These are the um these are the, the, the synonyms. Right? It's got a definition. Warn or reprimand someone firmly. Advise or urge someone earnestly. Warn someone of something to be um avoided. And it goes back to the um the Middle English amonest, which means to ur to urge or exhort. To urge by warning, right? Which is what we're doing, yo. Right? We're urging people by warning them of the coming judgment that the Heavenly Father is about to bring upon the earth. The famine, sword, destruction, massacres, yo, which you're gonna read about. To teach, to warn, to shine, to send out light, and that light is the scriptures, yo. Right? This is this is this light that we have. Is the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is ultimately Yahweh Shai, yo. right? And we are put, putting this candle, you see me, on a um, on a table so it can light up the house, yo. Right? The scripture say we are children of light, right? Amongst um, a perverse and dark generation, yo, and we shine forth that light, right? So that the elect who have eyes to see, right, will see the light and gravitate towards it. To be taught, to be admonished, to teach, to warn, to shine, to send out light. Right? Let's continue on with the precept. It says, When I say unto the wicked, verse 18, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. This is another reason why we have to push out this truth, though. Right? A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto us. We we have no choice but to warn you people, yo. Because if we don't, if we get this truth and we, we, we store it up, we store up that talent, and we don't trade our master's talent, then your blood is upon our head. 
right? So we do what? We make full proof of our ministry, right? Brothers go out into the highways and the byways. Brothers do videos um, personally and, and individually uploading videos, right? To what? To warn the wicked man of his iniquity. And that the Heavenly Father, the Father of Spirits, right, is sending His Son and His elect angels to judge the earth. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his um, wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So that's what we're seeking for, to be delivered, yo. Right? Two th we know two-thirds of our people will be unrepentant. They will not change, you know, from, uh, from their wickedness because they're set in it and the scripture um, has foretold them to be set in that, yo. Right? But we do our part, which is to warn. This is Acts chapter 20. All right, and I'll read from verse 25. And now behold, I know that ye, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Alright? So we make sure that we declare unto you all the counsel of God so that we are pure from the blood of all men. Alright? The ISUPK especially starting with the leader, General Yohanna, he's going to be stained with the blood of men who, who, who take that vaccine and ultimately take that chip, yo, because he has sold out and has not um, declared unto the people the counsel of the Heavenly Father, yo, but instead the counsel of the enemy, right? You have not gone up into the gaps to prepare the children of Israel for the day of the Lord, yo, this is Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while ye may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. He's near right now because his prophets are still available. His prophets are still in the highways and the byways doing videos, right? Shining forth that light, shining forth that warning, that admonition, that exhortation, that urging to avoid something that can be avoided, which is a judgment, yo. Right? Now we're going to get into the meat of the matter. Right, which is the um the chapter of Ezekiel chapter nine. And if you notice, right, Esau has given it a title, the vision of slaughter, which is where the title from this lesson um is inspired, yo. The vision of slaughter. Let's read about the vision of slaughter from Ezekiel chapter nine. But before we do so, just to understand what's happening here, in Ezekiel chapter eight, the Heavenly Father um took Ezekiel and showed him visions, right, and made him see all the wickedness that the people were committed in the land, you know, right, all the unrighteousness, all the filthiness, <coughs> the murders, the idolatry, right, the abominations that they are committing, and th those same things we see now, right, so let's read about the vision of slaughter and the judgment that the Heavenly Father is going to bring upon this place, you know. verse 1, he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Every man, even every man with his destroying weapon in hand. These are the angels, yo. Right? For each city upon earth, there are angels that have charge over it, yo, to bring down their destruction, to bring down their judgment. Right? And it says, Each of them have a what? A destroying weapon in their hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man amongst them was clothed in linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Right? It says, And the glory of the power of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed in linen, which had a writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the men that sigh and cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. Let's see if we can get an understanding, right, of that word um, sigh and cry. Right, we know that word um, mark goes back to the, the Hebrew tawa, which pretty much means exempt from judgment. Right, so let's look up um, sigh. So the Hebrew word here is anak, anach. He says to sigh, to groan in pain or grief, yo. Right? So this is these are the right, righteous men. Right? As I say, um, Lot vexed his righteous soul. Let me see if I can find that. 
right? Uh, my second here. Right, here we go. This is Second Peter chapter 2. I'll read from verse um, 6. It says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And there are people right now who have forgotten that example and are living their ungodliness. And do not blush when they, when, when they are, um, are, are reprimanded or admonished. Though. And deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. He was sighing and crying you know, for the abomination that was being uh, um, committed around him. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, which is what we're reading about now. Delivering the unjust by setting a mark upon them, which is this truth, this, this, this Holy Spirit, the Rakakodash, right, which the scripture says is a, is a seal of the, ex, of the earnest expectation of our reward. Right? So now we get an understanding of that. We read on to verse 5. And to the others... Right, the ones that were that received not that mark of exemption from judgment, right? To the others he said in mine earing, the ones who are unrepentant, who are stiff necked, who are continued in their wicked ways, yo. Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spear, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, women. Right, so the Heavenly Father is not going to be partial when He's about to um to, to, to dish out the judgment on the earth. The, the, the angels will have clear instructions. Slay everybody that doesn't have the mark, whether they be old or young, maids or little children and women, baby pam breast, all the man, young woman, old man, young man, everybody. The Heavenly Father is going to commit a sore slaughter in the land, yo. You people are, are, have no idea the, the, um, the level of, of atrocity that the, that the Heavenly Father is going is to um, commission on the earth. Yo. The scripture said, The slain of the Lord shall be many. He shall stain his raiment with the blood of his enemy. Yo. Right? It says, But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth, and they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slain, I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried, Ah, Lord, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Right? So Ezekiel was begging you because he saw the sore slaughter that was taking place. The angel was just going through and just, just wiping down men, women, and children, yo. Right? They were dead. Thousands of dead just cast down, yo. Blooded up. Right? And Ezekiel cried and begged, yo. Right? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. The land is full of blood, the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord has forsaken the earth, and the Lord saith not. Right? Let's get another example of a righteous man trying to pray, you know, for the wickedness that's, um, that, that, that's evident on the earth, yo. Right? This is Second Ezra chapter 7. Right? And I'll read from verse, um, verse 36. Then said I, Abram prayed for the Sodomites. Now, which Abraham didn't really pray for the Sodomites. He, he wanted to make sure that Lot was secure. And Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. And Joshua after him for Israel in the time of Achan. And Samuel and David for the destruction. And Solomon for them that should come to the sanctuary. And Helios for those that received rain. And for the dead that he might live. And Hezekiah for the people in the time of Shenasherib. And many for many. Even so now seeing corruption is grown and wickedness increased. And the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not now be so also? And this is the answer of the angel. He answered me and said this. This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Right? Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of the immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past. So the angel said hey, they, they prayed for the weak. They shouldn't even have to pray for them. yo. They shouldn't. 
This is Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 11. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them with the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. The Heavenly Father said, Pray not for this people, yo. Right? So when Ezekiel was there begging, the Heavenly Father said, you know, let me read verse 9 again. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of... Matter of fact, let me read from verse 8 again. And it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Our oh Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of, the, um, of Israel in thy pouring out of thy um, fury upon Jerusalem? There are precepts I want to bring out. Um... Uh, to show the wrath that the Heavenly Father is gonna um, is gonna bring you. Uh, no, that's not it. Is it? it? Oh, it's not it. Give me a second here, Akim. I believe I can find it. Uh, there's a precept that 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 um when the prophet asked him you know art thou angry with the rivers you know because of the um the judgment you know that the heavenly father was bringing upon the earth yo, right that's that's, that's pretty much how, how how um how deadly the um the, the judgment that the lord is gonna be yo but let's continue to read on if brothers um know the precept that's posted in post product in um in the comment board all right uh let me just continue um verse 9 it says then said he this is the reply of the lord the iniquity of the house of israel and judah is exceeding great even no more is, is more much more exceeding great yo and the land is full of blood and the city of per, full of perverseness for they say the lord has forsaken the earth the lord see it not and as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink in his right, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou was commanded. So the elect are marked with that tawa, with that mark of exemption, yo. And the rest. Right, are naked and ripe for the judgment, yo. And the Lord said, What? Mine eyes shall not spear, neither will I have pity. The Heavenly Father won't have pity on you people, yo, in the day of the judgment, yo. This is the time now for you to be penitent and repentant, yo. Right? But because you are not seeing with bodily eyes, you, you think that this judgment will not come. Right? But when it comes, it's going to be a sore slaughter. That's why this, this, this lesson is entitled A Vision of Slaughter, yo. The Heavenly Father is going to commit sore slaughter on the earth, yo. And you people are going to be put down like dogs in the street, yo. That's pretty much what I want to bring out. Give me the spirit to do this lesson. And I hope this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the arm um, to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom.